we are going to be building a champ, but my wife Angela here decided that she thought it would be fun for her to try and build one, and I think this will be a great thing to show that a new person to doing this kind of stuff, you know, electronic stuff, shouldn't fear the basics of a tube amplifier. I will put a caveat out there. These are going to be high voltages, even in a small amp like this, so always be very careful and make sure you're not going to be sticking your fingers down in it with a powered arm without having carefully discharged the capacitors. Mallory is here to help. All right, so she's going to first start jumpering stuff, and you probably guys can probably see a little bit in the background here, but we're gonna, she's looking at this here to jump her, and she needs to jump her between these three. So she's going to get her pliers and bend a little hook on the end that we'll, we'll be able to hook around. To yeah. Bend a little hook on the end. So that's how we do the grounding stuff. Sometimes I like it this way. Doug Hoffman showed me how to do it this way. The last video, if you watched on the AC30, I kind of just did the singleton, but it doesn't look as nice. This looks a little bit nicer. So that's one. We need a jumper, if you look over here as well, between not the first two, but the second two on this row. So you need to do a jumper between those two. So just repeat that process there. Let's see how we do. In theory, if you do these right, probably you wouldn't even need solder because you did such a good physical connection. But yeah. I always back it up with solder to make sure it can't move through time. I wouldn't count on my That's okay. this is what physical you're learning. connection. All right, so next we have... And the whole point of this is if somebody that's never done wiring of any of this stuff before can figure this out in front of your eyes, that means anybody can do it pretty much. And she's a pretty smart chica, but still. I'm just trying to show that she's only watched me do this sometimes. She's only been curious about it a little bit, never done it before. So the actual working through this stuff is not hard. It's just the working with the high voltages that you have to be wary of. What's that? Easy, easy. Yep. Easy, easy, easy. See, guys, my wife is almost as weird as I am. Almost. All right, so now we need to do the underboard jumper, so we'll just really quickly do this. So the other part that can be tricky about doing underboard jumpers is you're looking at it this way, but we're gonna flip it this way so it's, it's, it's kind of like a mirror image in a way. Okay. So you have to look, and what you think was the top is now the bottom. Oh. So I've, I've pushed that through, and you can leave just a little bit of the wiring, and then we have to kind of gauge this, and I'm gonna bend that out of the way just to kind of hold it in place. So what we want to do now is you go ahead and snip your snips, point it to where you want and cut just a little past it because we have to strip a little wire. Turn it over. Now I'm going to show you what I was taught by the Hoffman forums, el34world.com, is that you effectively want to get your, um, um, your pliers and pinch it down tight across the edge so that it can't come out or fall out on accident ever. And then just get your snips and cut away the little bit of excess wire. We don't need it going all the way down, we just need it to bend over. All right, so, so now we are done with that part. Um, what I want to do now as well is get our wires set up, which means we're gonna scroll up to the top here. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, we need to put wires off the bottom and off the top. I have a color code I like. I like black for ground and red for heat. So now what you want to do is strip back just the tip, just the tip, <laughs> mind you, as AVE always says. Um, peel back a little bit, and then we're going to kind of do the similar hook that you did with the mm -hmm. tip. And, and then I'll show you the second little tip. We do the hook. Mallory has a lot to say right yeah. now. But then what this. we're gonna do in theory is we want this wrapped around here, but also to bend right there and go down. So you'll want to also bend it about what you think is that space so that you can drop the screw down, or drop the, screw, drop the wire down through that hole and then kind of attach it. So bend it at a 90 degree angle, and then drop the wire through the hole and then you just kind of rotate it. You can kind of spin it around and rotate it until it hooks around that wire perfectly. And then get your, your pliers and pinch it.
For now, um, any new person is going to probably learn a valuable lesson from this is it won't hurt to waste a little wire when you're learning and as you get better at it, you can adjust and get less. Because I already on one of my other videos messed up and made it too short and I had to go in and splice a wire in the middle which was a bit of a pain in the butt. Longer's always better. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Sorry. Well, if you're watching, Mom, I <laughs> hope you're doing alright. <laughs> Love you! This makes me want to burst into sound. But this is one where we want to be careful with the um, no bare wire because that's a, a grounding bus and that's high voltage. The red is high voltage. So, okay. you know, you'll stick it through, but just make sure you keep the wire close to the turret. Is there any issue with this being close as far as interference? No, no. That's the high voltage coming in from into the power tube for the uh, grid two. And I'll tell you, Guys, she's probably going to have hers looking better than mine do already. Because she's more, uh... Anal? Finicky, yeah. Anal, <laughs> retentive about these things. Alright, so we realized... That we did run out of wire. doing the wrong thing. Well, yeah. We ran out of black wire, I was going to get some more, but then I realized I need the thicker gauge. I run 22 gauge on all of my preamp tube stuff. And for grounding, usually. But for the power tubes and the grounding of the power tube, in this case, the single one, I like to use the 18 gauge. So we don't need this one. She's going to pull that out and we're going to replace it with a 18 gauge of both of those. Yeah, I didn't like that connection that I had anyway. And that's the last of that side. So we're going to take a short break on the camera and we're going to flip it around and we'll do the bottom half. Okay.